have a word for you from the God this morning, and the title is God of the Hills and Valleys. We all experience hills and valleys in our life. We go through these every day. The word world will tell you that you ought to be trying to climb that hill. You ought to be trying to get to the top. Word world tells us when we're doing something, we want you to be number one. We want you to sell the most whatever. We want you to collect the most whatever. We want you to be the highest whatever. You want to be the top of everything. Well, the Bible doesn't quite go that way. So we're going to go into it a little bit this morning. We're going to go at... Uh, 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, and I'm going to read the 4th through the, let's say the 10th verse. 4 through 10. 1 Kings, chapter 19. And he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, he saw a cake baking on the coals, and a curse of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid himself down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he rose and did eat and drank, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and nights unto Herod of the Mount of God. And he came heaven unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou? Here, Elijah, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, slain thine prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. And they did seek my life. Take it away. Now this, if you read your Bible, you know that this is the second part. The first part comes to pass when, when Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal. Whatever God can rain down fire and light the altar, that God would be God. But Jezebel and the king Ahab, they were behind the, king, the prophets of Baal. And Jezebel did not like the fact that Elijah's God had rained down fire, had burned the altar, even after it was soaked with water. He burned the altar so he would be God. And Elijah slain all the prophets of Baal. After he found out that Jezebel had sent a word that by this time tomorrow, say around 3 o'clock, your life won't be anymore. She was planning to kill him. And after all that God had done, rained down fire from heaven, Elijah, in one of those moments of the battle of the shadow of death, he got, as the children would say these days, he got his hat and left. He ran for his life because he was scared. You would think that after being on the hill, after being on the hill, calling down fire, that's the top. We, if you call on God and God rains down fire at your request, you would think you at the top of the hill. You would think that there's nothing anybody can do to you because you got a God that's able to do that. But even the prophet Elijah had a weak moment. Even the prophet of Eli Elijah had a moment that he thought, it's just me by myself. They've got written to everybody else. And it's just me, I, I, I'm going to go. And he went to this place, into the woods, under this juniper tree, and he asked God to take his life. 
Well, God is a God of heal and back. Earlier, prior to all this, Ahab ran into Elijah and said, aren't you the one that trouble Israel? Israel being God's chosen people. God's chosen people. Yet, Israel, I heard this from Sunday school this morning, they had strayed away from what God wanted them to do. They left God. And every time they left God, God would punish them. And they'd get back in line. Well, this time, God wouldn't blame them. God showed them his power by raining down fire from heaven. He used a man to call down fire from heaven in his name. You know, there are times in our life when we are weak. There are times in our life, and usually it comes right after we've made progress. We've done something. God has blessed us. God has blessed you on this job. And you out here, you're doing well. And then something happens to bring you down. It's like, all oh, this is going to be taken away from me. What do I do? Instead of calling on God again, we run. We hide. We look for alternate ways of handling stuff. And God said, I'm still here. I'm the same God in the back. And you know what God showed me this? Where do you find water? In the lowest spot. It's in the valley. Now, we are being told that we're supposed to be on the hill. You know what's on the hill? Predators. They look down and see where the, where the prey is. I'm going to go down and I'm going to get that one. All your enemies are looking they're up high, looking down or trying to get you. But God is also up high. God knows what you are and God knows what you need. He's the same God. The same God that lifted you up. And the same God, when you fall down, will lift you up again. God is God. We go to, through things in life. David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not know. He leads me in the valley. He leads me. Woo! Woo! Beside me. Green pasture. The green pasture. You don't find the higher you go, the rockier it is. You don't find water sitting on the side of a hill. If there's a hill, there may be a valley in between the hill. There may be a mountain pasture, a mountain valley. But we're going to call on God no matter where we are. See, you have to make this a, a life routine, a habit. You have to call on God. You have to ask God to lead you through the valley of the shadow of death. Every valley doesn't have a green path. Some of them are rocky. Some of them have crags. Some of them have have you ever seen the Grand Canyon? The Grand Canyon, the Colorado River flows through it and it's just never been there because I ain't finna fly no time soon if I can help it. But it, it, it's large mountains on each side, rocks, and it's very little grass. But the grass that you find is down there right alongside the river. And the river is carved down these huge valleys. And there's water in that valley. There's grass in that valley. Some spots in there, there there's only water. There's rocks. We go through things in our life where there's only rocks. There's water there, but the water's running so swift, you can't get out of there to drink it. God will lead you in a path where you will have water. If you remember this passage here, it says that the angel brought cake for him to eat a cake. And it said also that it was warm for him to drink. And after he ate and drank twice, he was sustained for 40 days. For 40 days. So what God gives you sustains you. It's not like what the world gives you. The world will give you accolades. They will lift you up. But they lift you up only to bring you right back down. 
God doesn't do that. God will lift you up and he will sustain you till he can feed you again. The word of God sustains God's people. The word of God keeps God's people. If you want to be kept, we are in a society, we're in a time of our life where things don't look good. We're in a time, something what like Sodom and Gomorrah. The, all the, the worst thing that you can think of, people are doing. And they don't want you to tell them that they're doing wrong. They just want, if I ain't bothering you, don't bother me. God told us to tell them. Whether they receive it or not, tell them. And we are children of God. We have God. Best interest. Not bad. We have to do what's best. Some people will never follow God. But you got to tell them. Whether they receive it or not, you still have to tell them. Because God said, we are his mind. We are his body. We are his. He said, when I come back, I'm coming back to the church. I ain't coming back to see how Ian doing. I ain't coming back to see how the brother doing. I got you for that. I've got you to go and tell them when they need to be told something. If God tells you to tell them, I expect you to tell them. If the pastor the can't get you to do, pray. You know, sometimes pastor, and I and I and I ran into a situation earlier this well last night. Where I was I was just as the words are dumbfounded by the actions of a so-called pastor. I couldn't I couldn't wrap my mind around what what he was doing in his pulpit. His pulpit. And I, I said, Boy, I want you to receive it. His pulpit. Not God's pulpit. You have people under you who you know God has anointed to preach, to minister. And you make a difference in How is that? You got, it, it's not a difference between men and women. You got men and women ministers. But there's this one minister who he got issues with. He won't let them preach. So they finally went and asked, did I do something? No. Did you? <laughs> he asked them, did you? No, I don't think I have. I, but you haven't asked me to preach since this moment. Okay, well, my pulpit, I'll let you know when you need to preach. Let me tell you something. If you are a child of God and you follow God, if you are a, a, a follower of Christ, then you follow Christ. If, see, people are following people. People are looking to people. If, 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 if God made you the pastor of a church that's where he wants you to be if God placed you in a church that's where God wants you to be see we have this thing of the world we bring it into the house of God and God oh God made me a pastor so I, I think I need to build up I think I need to go higher I've been a pastor of a little church for a long time now it's time for me to get, go a little bit higher I need me a bigger congregation I need me a bigger church. I need to follow. See, I, 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 the world told me that I need to be higher, so I'm going to get me a bigger church. I'm going to go out seeking a bigger congregation. I'm going to go out seeking more souls that I can run the head. I'm going to go out trying to run people out of church. I'm going to entertain some people. I'm going to hoop a little bit. I'm going to tell them what they need to hear. I'm going to tell them what they like some. And they won't start pouring in here. And people around say, oh, that's that pastor of that big old church over there. Uh -huh. Invite me to the county courthouse. And after that, I might go to the Senate and, and, and pray a little bit over there. They might invite me to the White House. I may be the, the Dallas Cowboys preacher. You know, if I start small, the world would say that if you start small, then you need to be trying to gain up, climb up that hill. 
if God wanted you up a hill, I, I think he'd have told you. See, we follow in the world when we should be following God. God has told us that the first shall be last. So if you're trying to be first, then you got to bring self down. Put self, you, the, God called us pastors to be servants. We are to serve everyone, not only in the church, but in this community. Because if I want them to see the God in me, I have to show God, not only in this pulpit of here, but every time I go out, I've got to let them see the Christ in me. I can't go down here and say, well, you know, I, 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 because I, I wear a nice suit, then you know, you need to let me in front of you. Because, you know, I, I can't stand in this line and go in and, and pay for groceries like I, I'm going to go over there and do the, hey, can you open another one over here? I, I can't stand in this long line over here because, you know, I'm the pastor Trinity. God ain't never told me not to stand in the line. God ain't never told me. <laughs> Woo! Church. Isaiah 40 and 4. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain shall, and hill shall be made low. Every crooked, the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Why are you trying to put yourself up? God is trying to bring you down. God wants you in a place where he can use you. If your attitude, if your, it got you greater than him, how can he use you? You know, I, I'm, that drunk came in. Uh, he smells so bad. I just told the deacons to go do something with him. Because I ain't going to fool with him. I, I, let the deacons do it. Pastor ought to be the first one back there. Praying for him. Trying to help him, trying to get him off whatever he's on. Because that people people look for. They look for something to help when they're hurt. You see all these children that run away? Look at their home first. Find out why they run away. Something's happening there. People on drugs, they're trying to get away from something. People on alcohol, they're trying to get away from something. Instead of you trying to lift yourself up. Why don't you go lower yourself and try to help somebody? If you were on drugs and somebody, all they want to do is tell you how bad you are, what you ought to do to get off this, wouldn't you want somebody to ask you, why did you get on? What, what, what was the problem in the first place? Wouldn't you want somebody to pray with you? Wouldn't you want the pastor, not, not somebody, that, a lay person, go out there and pray for them, Sister Martha, and you know, find out what they need. Wouldn't you want the pastor to go out there and say, so, how can I help you? What can God? Look, at first, I want to pray for you. I want to pray. And then I want to find out how can we? How can I help you? Because I'm not looking to build up myself. Because if I was looking to build up myself, I wouldn't be driving down there every week, two or three times a week. I'm looking. Get up. Thank you, Lord. I'm looking for the end result. I'm looking for what happens when all this is over with. I'm looking for when that mountain is brought down, where am I? Because if I'm climbing that mountain trying to get to God and God is down here in the valley, what happens when I get to the top? People go, sometimes, if you ever noticed a shepherd, if you ever looked at them, if you ever dis, dis studied them, they will take that shepherd, they will take that lamb, a sheep, and they will climb a mountain but they're climbing to get to the other side of, the, of another valley. Because that sheep have eaten everything in this. And then when they've eaten everything over here, it's time to move. Instead of you trying to... Oh, Lord Jesus God. Instead of you trying to be a good shepherd and guide your... Woo, guide your herd where they need to be going, you're trying to get that food. You ain't worried about the people behind. You ain't worried about the people that, who God entrusted you with. You trying to get up there and see what else you can get. Well, if I get him over there, that look like Brother James stuff over there. He got good, I just bring over. Y'all, come on. Let's go over here and get in Brother James stuff. What? That, 
Did I ask God where I need to take them? Did I ask God to lead me as I lead them? No. God is the same. When I was low, when I was a sinner, when God showed himself to me, I was low. He was low. When he lifted me up out of that muck and mire, out of that mud, out of that all sinful stuff I was, I was wallowing in, when he lifted me up, he's the same God. That he that I found when I was down there. The same God. And he treated me the same way. He didn't change. He expected me to change. Just like God expecting you to change. God is going to bring down these mountains in, in, in us churches. God is going to bring them low because they've elevated themselves above him. It's not about what God is, it's about all our rules and all our Everything that we put in in place of the box. We put in, oh, you got to pay your pay your uh, monthly dues to the church. You got to pay that five dollars. Because if you don't pay that five dollars, I ain't talking about your tithes and all. You got to pay that monthly due. Because if you don't pay that monthly due, then you don't get buried in us cemetery right there. You don't get paid. Uh uh. You got on top of your your offerings and your tithes, you got to pay that monthly due. We put that in there. That ain't no way in the Bible. And I know they do it because they were doing it in the church I came from. If you didn't, back then was a quarter. But if you didn't pay that quarter a month, oh, that would been a lot of years. No, oh, that's for sure. If you don't pay that, you don't get buried. I don't know what you're going to do, but you don't get buried. We put in rules in place. God didn't put a rule. The only rule he said is believe on me. Believe on me. He's the same God. On your when when you were made low, you know the hills and valleys for personal experience. I'm breaking it down for personal experience. When I was low, when I didn't think anything would bring me up, when I did, when I thought I lost everything, I, I lost I nothing was making me happy. After Sister Mary died, I couldn't find joy in anything. I had the job I wanted, I had the wife I wanted, I had the family I wanted. I found no joy in it. But while I was down there wallowing, because Melvora told me I needed something, I needed to be saved, and I didn't know anything about it. While I was down there wallowing, I found God. He was down there, and he lifted me up. And when he lifted me up, I found joy. I found a love that I didn't know I needed. And when I found a love, I started telling everybody, do you know God? Do you know the love? You, he loves you more than you love yourself. I found that love. And let me tell you, I was low. I was in a valley when I found it. And when I'm on a hill right now, I still know it. I still trust him. I still ask him to guide me. He's the God of the hills and the valley. The, but the world will tell you you don't need to be in them back. But the water's in the back. The green grass is in the back. You keep climbing up the hill, you won't find nothing but rocks at the top. Until you get to the other side. Now, there are valleys. There are valleys of the shadow of death. But God is down there too. I don't care where you go. He was there all the time. He was there. He was there when I didn't know I needed him. He was there now when I needed him more than ever. He was there when my daughter was dying. He was there when my mother passed. He was there in all my valley. And what kind of Christian, what kind of so-called follower would I be following a God when I'm in the valley? When I don't need it, when I need him. But when I get to the top, I don't need you now, God. I got this. What kind of follower of Christ are you? When you think that you got everything, you don't, you don't do what he said. You don't call on him anymore. You don't pray to him anymore. But just when I need him, oh, Lord, it's me again. We say he's worthy of all the praise, all the glory. But are you giving him praise? Are you giving him glory? The same God. 
that pulled you out of that valley of the shadow of death. The same God who stood you up on a firm foundation. The same God who put you up, who fed you, who kept you. The same God. That's my God. That's my Christ. That's my Savior. And that's my love. 